Georgia Tech head football coach Brett Key making his way onto the field here at historic Bobby Dodd Stadium on an absolutely perfect day on the flats for the annual white and gold spring game after a Gasparilla Bowl victory last December. There's a lot of optimism surrounding this team. and It'll be the fans' first opportunity to see what this 2024 Yellow Jacket team looks like. For you to prove that you can continue to have that job, but it's also an opportunity for someone else to prove that they should have your job. Aiden Burke kicks off, and it'll be a fair catch for every kickoff today on special teams as Christian Leary makes the catch. To the defense. Yeah, he did have 16 interceptions last year, so you want to cut those down. Quickly, the swing pass out to his tailback, Jamal Haynes, and Haynes shows you his versatility. You know, he was one of those guys that you highlighted in the open that kind of came out of nowhere last year. And Read what the defense is trying to do to get to him. Haynes looking for a place to run, gets it to the outside, and gets big yards, 45 into opposing team's territory, so Haynes with a couple of big plays. 23 yards on the carry for Haynes. This time he's gonna have to bounce it outside and switch his field, but he gets brought down for a loss on the play. Are they able to flow downhill? Are those defensive linemen doing a good job of occupying those offensive linemen? King to throw, steps up into the pocket, fires one too high for his intended receiver, Malik Rutherford. Jamal Haynes moves over to his left in the gun. Tech bringing some pressure. They bring five, but it's picked up over the middle. Nice one-handed catch and a big hit. Now, that's not something you see every day in the spring game. Know where to pick up those blitzing linebackers. Off the edge, King. Nice job finding his receiver. That's Eric Singleton. Georgia Tech in the red zone here on this first offensive possession. Haynes wrestled down after a gain of one, maybe two yards. Defense last year near the top in those categories. Eighth play of this drive to open up this white and gold game. Nice move by Haynes, and he'll score. I would say number 11 in white is carrying, uh, picking up right where he left off last year. And the difficulty with this play is you've got the jet sweep action coming, so the linebackers have their eyes on that action, and then you get the ball to the versatile Haynes, and he's one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, and I think the Georgia Tech coaching staff will... Warm takes the opening kickoff and marches down the field, mixing in passing and running and putting it in the end zone. Burr with the point after trying Only time last year, they were in a little bit of trouble, right? I mean, they, that game in Miami, they probably should have lost it. They would have been two and five at that. Coach up, they have to experience it and see them pull through it. So now Zach Pyron, he's chased out of the pocket on the run. That's a nice throw, it hits his receiver, loses the ball out of bounds, but it'll stay with that side. is down on that one, so it'll be first down. Pyron's gonna run it. Eifert gives chase and they blow it dead. That's something you'll see in the spring game, too, is they're not going to have Eifert. Pyron to throw. A pressure on the edge, but it's picked up. Had a tight end over the middle. Good feel for each other. Now he's getting it with some of these other quarterbacks. And Pyron has chased that out of the pocket. Thought he might be throwing it away, but he finds a receiver downfield. That's a heck of a catch by Jenna. And you saw target towards him. A good job by Janae to help his quarterback on that yeah, play. Yeah, they need him. Huh? He's a 6'3". He's a big receiver. Pyron keeps it. And they'll blow this one dead as again. Eford 44 was given chase. Main targets for Haynes King, but who's going to be that third guy? Yeah, Canyon, the high-level recruit, was once a Notre Dame commit. Not playing in the spring as he's still getting healthy from an injury he had before he got here. Give the Dickens in the middle. And he runs into a solid wall of gold jerseys. Maybe yeah, give him a yard. Season when they scored 28 points. And I think from that point on offensively, they knew what they had the capability to do. Speaking of capability, let's see what Aiden Burke can do on a 61-yard attempt. He's got enough leg. And he's got it. And look at his teammates mob him. Okay. And look at Brent Key, he knows. I got a guy who can hit a 60-yard field goal. That's a great thing to know going into the season. Pretty impressive, man. It didn't look like he put a whole lot of effort into it. It just looked like a very smooth kick. And it cleared. That could have been good for maybe 65, 66 yards. It cleared the crossbar very easily. Got a career long. Last year's team from a confidence standpoint coming into the year, knowing you can get it done. Because it's one thing to talk about it, as he said, but it's another thing to have proven it on the field. And now the kids know they can do it.
Well, one thing about Coach Key, I, I love me. That's the type of coach I expect him to be. Those were disciplinarians. King finds a tight end. That'll move the sticks. Ryan, Ryland Goaty is one of the tight ends which is transferred into this program. Yeah, we had a great season last year, but that's dead. That's over. This is a whole new season. Let's accept the challenge now. King on the run tried to hit Singleton, but he was well covered downfield for today. Haynes has a big hole to run through. Picked up about six onto the scene last year. Now Trey Cooley will get a look. King to pass. He's flushed out of the pocket. Throws downfield. Ball tipped and intercepted. Case Adams on the pick. Returns at 21 yards. As you said, pressure forcing Haynes King out of the pocket. Ball tipped. Adams with the pick. He doesn't sit back. He allows his guys to be special on the football field. They get up the field. They pressure offenses. You saw last year, they gave that Florida State high-powered offense everything they could handle in the first half prior to their quarterback going down. And who's to say successful? So they've got to do a better job. And I think it, once again, starts with that defensive front, that front seven. They have to do a better job. It starts with the two big fellows down inside, Lockett and Biggers, being ace-gap stoppers, not allowing Josh Robinson, me, this defense. Yeah, Josh Robinson doing his part from the defensive end spot there in stopping Carey. Tech fans are getting a dose of this true freshman running. Those guys are out there on the field. You saw Horace Lockett there. 15 pounds is like throwing a deck chair off the Titanic for Horace <laughs> Lockett. It was 340 pounds last year. Nice job defensively knocking the ball away. Warren Perez. Gavin Stewart now will attempt this field goal. This is 41 yards. Puts a leg into it and misses it wide right. No good by Gavin Stewart. Week zero in London on the 24th, and it's just it's tough throughout. And although they should beat Georgia State, that will be a tough game because it's an inner position in that role. They go with it, and you see him read and get up the scene for the touchdown once again. Great job by Haynes King reading what the defense. Singleton on the receiving end on that strike. That'll be a first down. 14 yards on the pitch and catch. Cedric Franklin in coverage. This looked nice from this angle here. You want to allow the quarterback to step up with those throws and for the tackles. You want to keep the width, so you have to keep that outside shoulder back. Don't give up a short corner to those defensive ends. King quickly to the outside. It allows for those guys to be great because no one knows who's going to be that guy. They're continuing to compete. Rutherford makes the catch out in space. Yeah, I'll give about five yards. And I like what King did on that play. Third down and four. As a receiver wide open, that's Rutherford again. Cuts it back inside, brings it down about the 38-yard line. Tajay Butler, the true freshman. Tried to force that pass that he looked at possibly throwing the play before as opposed to going to a safety valve. Now he throws it away. They may have blown that one dead. That looked like a sack up there because I've gotten it there before. Now the option, quick pitch out. Nice move by his running back. Check that, that's Singleton out. No, Rutherford, rather. Never phased. You always felt like you had a chance, I think, if you're a Tech fan with him in the ball game. And I think people have to remember, too, he comes from Texas. And Texas high school football is a whole different beast. So he knows. Goaty, another opportunity on the catch. Tight end is an area that they really need a lot of help with, and they got a couple of transfers in Goaty. And in uh, this Jackson Hawes from Yale, we'll see him a little bit later. Defense, and then he can do the stop, the jump throws. There's a lot that he can do because of his ability to run the football and influence defenses. Godey has a blocker. Cooley has the runner. Picks the Yellow Jackets having to replace him. Very productive back in his years here on the flats. That ball is loose. Picked up by the defense. And then they'll blow it dead, but I think they're going to rule that as a turnover. This time King keeps it, gets it out to Rutherford. 
Makes one man miss and gets into the end zone. Touchdown. Well, Kari Chi won't be very happy with himself that he let Rutherford escape his clutches. But he won't be the first one or the last one that Rutherford will do that to. And a good job getting the ball out to your playmaker in space. And you see his ability in the open field. He's very slippery. So you've got to hold on to Rutherford and try to get him up a little bit down there at the five yard line. Burr with the PAT splits the uprights. Second half of the season. New quarterback is Aaron Philo. And this is Chad Alexander. Another young player that you can see his numbers broke the state record previously held by Trevor Lawrence. So 12 can sling it. 56 touchdowns his senior year. Here's People Alex. Pray for that for a career. <laughs> the ADCC level, but getting an opportunity here to show what he can do. Fires that one too high for his intended receiver, Zion Taylor. That you'll need to be successful on both sides of the football. Now whistle this one dead as Philo was a, about to be sacked. He presents to his players. Saw Jordan Vandenberg on that list. He's coming in from Penn State. Yet to enroll, so we won't see him today, but we'll see him in the summer. And for six guys that are elite quarterbacks, where they go, what team has a need, what team trades up to get that quarterback that they think is going to be their future. The most looking, interesting one to me, I think. He steps on the field, but quarterback heavy. You know, it's such a big decision when you're looking at quarterbacks because this is not big too. The quarterback has to fit what you do. And it's almost impossible to make that right decision because you just it's you just don't know. Yeah. Evaluating talent from the college level to the NFL level is so difficult to do is scout team guy who puts in the work. So getting rewarded today with the captaincy and carrying the ball here on the pitch. Whereas I went through that when I played at Florida State University and they had us on what was called a blue plate diet where you would get white rice with a pat of butter. You get boiled chicken or baked chicken. They even gave you the butter, though. Okay. <laughs> but <A> boiled chicken. <laughs> Inside hands, just like the offensive lineman, because then you can dictate where the lineman can go. And you can hold on to him and keep him from those second level defenders. So their development will be key to this defense development. Ira now facing another third down. Goes downfield, has a receiver, just overshoots Chase Lane. First time we've seen seven in white today, Chase Lane. And then you've got depth with all of the transfers coming in. Here's Burr again with another bomb. This one from 59 yards. And he missed it left, although he did have the leg on it. Did you have an option to wear number eight as a lineman? I mean, think about that. It's like, I mean. That's more of the defensive line guys yeah, trying to be cute. Those are the guys that tie trying their, to be cute. They tie their shirts up. They want to show the muscles in their stomach. Defensive lineman is trying to be cute. Yeah, we don't do all that. Philo on the run, showing his athleticism out of the pocket. EJ Lightsey transfer from Georgia. The line future at that quarterback spot for this Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket team, and we're getting a good eye at Philo here. Dickens on the carry. Runs to a big hole. He'll pick up the first. Philo to throw. Has time over the middle. This is going to be a big play by Taylor. All the way inside the five. Clayton Powell Lee finally tracked him down. That's so after the big game, they moved the team back. And this is receiver one handed catch. The beautiful catch at that by Stockton. Gets dropped at the five. Offense here for Philo to try and get it into the end zone. Play fake over the top. Touchdown. And that's that big 6-3 frame we talked about earlier with Jenna. Lead your receiver, but also put it in a position where only he can make a play on it. Watch Jenna. There's no one else that can make a play on that football but Jenna. If he's not going to catch it, nobody else is. That's what you want to do as a quarterback. Give your guy a chance, but no one else. Stewart for the try, and it's good. Let's see what Pyron is going to do here with the clock ticking down. Quick one to Goaty. They'll stop the clock. 
Or will they? Yes, they 55 pound tight end. <laughs> That's the Gronk factor right there all over the place, right? That's why you can never cover him. That's why he was always Tom Brady's favorite receiver. Pyra now out of the pocket, going to throw deep. Has a man down there and makes the catch, and that's going to be out of bounds inside the five. Thought they might give him the scores. Chris Elko. The clock has hit triple zeros, but watch Pyron here as he's chased out of the pocket and just lets it fly. But he keeps his eyes down the field. That's what you ask for the quarterback to do. Touchdown. And I was wondering why the official called him out. I thought he reached yeah. over and got the ball over the pylon or Watch against his. the pylon before he went out of bounds. Look at his legs going out of bounds. Yes, he did. You're right. Hit that pylon before that knee touched out of bounds. 46 yards for the score. Plus, it's the spring game, Mr. Official. Give him the touchdown. Give Elko the score, the redshirt freshman from Roswell. Of thumb is do not allow anyone to get behind you from a defensive standpoint. That is the end of the first half. Burke hands the PAT 21 10 is our score at the half. The details and definitely just want to get it together before we all start um, kickoff for college football. So as we see a trick play here. And it's going to be incomplete, almost picked off, covered up very well that time by Omar. Great addition to that running back room. And Jamal, last question. Talk about the transition from wide receiver to running back. What did it take for you to become such a special player at the running back position? Honestly, the same mentality that I had at wide receiver. I mean, coming into this year, what, what were you trying to work on? Was it something where you were trying to get stronger, bigger? What was it that you had personally that you wanted to get better at coming into this season? Uh, definitely with the change from going to wide receiver to running back. They've got an abundance of athletes coming out of that program. So the ability for him to go from a wide receiver to a running back is not surprising because of the versatility of the guys that come out of that program and all. Pyron on the run, incomplete. Cooley out of the backfield, wide open. And that'll be enough to move the sticks. Player looking and covering that up. Pyron has a receiver open downfield. Makes the connection inside the 30. It's Elko again. Under the football. That's what you want to do as a quarterback. Put a little air under the football. Pyron to throw again. Has time over the middle. Has a receiver open. Hits him inside the 10. And this is Elko's now in the red zone. Pyron over the top, behind his receiver. Defended nicely that time by Cedric Franklin the second as he was trying to find Leo Blackburn. Now Tech fans will be happy. Even fans think that's their number three receiver. You see him at the top of your screen. And that should have been a back shoulder throw right there. And those are some of the things that the coaching staff will work. Third down and goal. Pyron again to throw. Has him in the corner this time. He and Blackburn connect. And it almost looked like they were playing a zone coverage on the back end of the defense. Because you'll see the defender right there. He'll let Blackburn run by him. Georgia in for the PAT. No good. But as opposed to last year. Oh uh, yes, yeah, so the only difference is uh, scheme and just like building their terminology, building a bond with them coaches, a relationship with the guys, and just trying to just move forward every day, just trying to get better. Great job, because I feel like it'll bring us like more more experience on the field and just setting up guys to make plays. That's what we all trying to do to make make plays and just get one percent better every day. Line of scrimmage for our linebackers to come off and make plays as well. Any of these young cats on defense impressed you this spring? Oh uh, yes, sir. Uh, no doubt. Um, Spice, Spice Adams, he's been coming up for the D-line. Uh, no, nah, that's about it. That's about it for the D-line. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to remember that one. Yes, sir. Makaius, appreciate your time, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. All right. See, you learn something new every day. Not only do we learn about the new mantra with that defensive line, but Spice. And the ability to play inside and outside, which makes him such a valuable player to this defense because he's interchangeable. And you could go to different formations and not have to change personnel when he's on the football field. So that's what made, that is what's going to be different about this defense as opposed to last year. Zion Taylor getting some good run today. Made that, that last catch. It's Brody Rhodes. 
He's now showing his athleticism at that quarterback spot. Still on his feet before he gets touched down. Brody Rhodes, redshirt junior from Canton, Georgia. Went to Creekview High School. Eye on number one in gold, Miles Brooks. Projected as a starting safety when the season begins on August 24th against FSU. That's like that's definitely the one thing. That's the one thing you don't want to get out of today. Anything else is fine. You don't want to get a player hurt on your final spring practice. Length as well from that safety position. Rhodes to the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Cover. And complex to say, hey, I've got to show out and make that play every time I'm on the field. Rhodes to the end zone. That one's intercepted. Warren Burrell came down with it. Rhodes and he continues back. his impressive spring with the INT. And he's letting everyone know about it, too. And like Shelly on the play before, he fights through, he locates the football, he does a good job of high pointing and squeezing the football and bringing it to his body. They're still looking the same. That's always, and not, not just looking the same. We, gonna, we definitely going to try to be better. We're going to be a lot better than last year. And that's always a good thing going into the next year. We'll talk about the room. It don't matter. It, don't, it didn't matter what we were doing. We knew what the expectation was. And we, we were short of it last year. We wanted it to at least be at, at least the ACC championship. So that's tackle the guard this year. You might have to move some pieces around to make sure you get the top five guys on the field at any one time. How tough is that for an offensive lineman? Oh, no, it's tough for sure because you always got to it, – it's tough playing. My first time going from tackle to guard, you just, you just going to see yourself getting better as a player overall. And talk about that versatility with your younger players coming in. Is there a young guy that has impressed you, one of the young offensive linemen that are here early? On the old line, what do you call it? He like the dark horse right now. He can play all five, and, that, and that's really impressing me. Oh, yeah, yeah, come my way. Oh, yeah, see? If they, they came over to the sideline, I had to lower my shoulder on them. But it's all good, though. And then Jordan Floyd. Oh, they love yes. Tana. <laughs> Tana Alo Tupuola, who is – Really, their center of the future. I mean, they've got Weston Franklin, who Coach Key said Franklin Riggs could start the year at left tackle. The future's bright for these young offensive linemen, and I think it's kind of rare. As you see Blackburn on the receiving end here, rare to see so many true freshman offensive linemen getting a lot of playing that time. Good thing to be a leader of, you know, forefront of the team, but, you know, being a young guy don't mean none. It's just how you, how you got to carry yourself, how you do carry yourself, getting put into our heads, you know. Uh, I mean, definitely, you know, bringing in some new guys. We've got a couple of transfers, so the boys got some experience. Um, for you personally, what are you doing in the off season to get ready for next year? Whether it's change. Well, I mean, it hasn't been too much of an adjustment. You know, we just got to adapt. You know, it's, it's definitely a much more defined defense. So I mean, they'll stop the run. So that's that's what we're gonna do. All right, Kyle, we appreciate your time. Best of luck this season, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Kyle. All right. Together. So you've got to see those plays, those highlight plays right there. So fourth down for Graham Knowles. He's going to go to the end zone, trying to get it to Lane again. Nice catch. Did he get a foot in? No. To the end zone. He's looking back at the board. No, that right foot just couldn't quite get it down and hit the chalk. Hell of an effort, though, and that's a perfect pass from Knowles. And Philo back in. Swing pass. That's Evan Dickens on the receiving end. Maybe picks up a yard. Part of the scrimmage because these are the guys that are, you're going to depend on to be backups and guys that you depend on to come into the football game. Bailey Stockton again. Look at that speed, too, as he outruns the defender. He gets a block downfield. Stockton is going to score. Well, Bailey Stockton and Chris Elko are battling it out for the receiver of the game award. And a great job by number four, Abdul Janay, to get down there and give him the block that he needed to get back to the inside. What I like about what Stockton did on this crossing route is he got to the edge, he got to the outside, he was able to stay in bounds with the defender, and then he allowed his receiver to get a block to get him that lane that he needed to cut back there for staying in bounds, and then he steps Still 53 yards on the pitch and catch. Again, Philo quickly. Jenna. Avoids the first tackle, but can't avoid the second and third up to the top of the hour. 
Philo continues to guide the offense. Got one on one coverage to the end zone. Touchdown catch made by Zion Taylor. Well, he's one of those skill position players on offense we thought we might see a little bit of today, and we're seeing a lot more of them today. And there's nothing else uh, the defensive back could have done on that play. Clayton Lee Powell. Stewart converts to PAT. Totally unknown commodity. You came in, you had an explosive season, freshman All-American. Mm -hmm. Now you kind of got that target on your back. Like yeah. you're not, you're not going to surprise anybody out there. You're going to get their best cover corner. Talk about the offense and what your total expectations are this season. You guys come in as one of the top returning offenses. You've got an abundance of talent kind of that have, you know, impressed you, not just from the receiver position, but from other positions on the offense. Uh, on the offense, uh, we got we got some um, young old linemen who they threw them right in the fire and they, they handled it well. So Eric, enjoy the rest of the day. You too. All right, Eric Singleton, freshman All-America last year, part of this deep receiving core that Georgia Tech has coming into this year and a lot of weapons for Haynes King and company on the receiving end. And Jackets go to Ireland to play Florida State to open the season. Bailey Stockton back to return this pump, but he watches it bounce out of bounds. See who's coming out here at quarterback. Got the jersey tucked up underneath the shoulder pads. Not doing me any favors. Nice run that time, though, by Chad Alexander. Looks like Ben Guthrie at quarterback. Blocks finding the seam and getting and hitting the seam when they need to. There's a nice pass over the middle. Defended well, though. Knocked away. That might have been Tay Seymour again defending on that play. Routes. One of the more difficult routes to cover. Third down and one. Alexander will pick it up. Move the yeah, sticks. Alexander carries the football. Again, Tafasi on the Doing a good job. He's getting a lot of play in time today. That's a nice strike. Completion to Jinnah. Ben Guthrie on the money. Guys in the middle of that defense. They kind of be stout at the point of attack. It allows them to move Scott around more. Carry with a nice job after the catch to elude the defender. But the. Carry and try to bounce it up inside. Right into the teeth of that defense. Maybe picked up a couple. There you see Al out. That squatty and they're already, you know, have a low natural low center of gravity. Got three flushed out of the pocket. Throws that one incomplete and as a tackle and not a lot of pressure in the quarterback's face. Yeah, at 6 one 3 30, big in the dumper. Guthrie has a receiver open and a bounce inside the 15. Zion Taylor. Guthrie's the fifth quarterback we've seen today, and all five of them have played very well. Alexander, now Guthrie's going to keep it. They'll blow the play dead inside the five. Plays and that's outside of the guys that you know when you're talking about Leary, you're talking about Rutherford, you're talking about Singleton. Other guys are making plays, and that makes this offense very versatile for D. Lee. So if there's an area where you see concern and there's a need, you get in that portal and you find that talent, you match the talent to what you do and what you're looking for and what their capability is. Just because a guy was a great line for the goal line as we're inside a minute. Guthrie to throw to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. That's Chris Elko. I, I kind of laughed to myself because I'm they don't. Pritchett and Tay Seymour covering him on that play. And he's able to get beyond both of those guys. These quarterbacks have done a good job of putting the ball right where it needs to be. Burr on the try. Burr will kick the 61 yard field goal in the first roll because a lot of guys have put their name in a hat and showed up today uh, to make this a very challenging decision for the coaching staff. Dinner in on him at the varsity. Someone else is buying that chili cheese <laughs> slaw dog for Chris Elko and that FO. And we've gone final 27 24. Team Swarm with the win.
What are your final thoughts after what you've seen today? This offense is as advertised, and I think they will be a problem for defenses. I think defensively we saw some flashes of what Coach Santucci and his staff want to see. They just have to continue to develop, especially at that second level at the linebacker position. Hey.